Hey everybody, welcome to another quick hit where today we're going to try to answer a common clinical question. When you have a sick patient who needs central venous access, you may ask yourself, should I place a femoral line? And if you haven't heard it yet, you'll hear the naysayers sort of come out of the woodwork about all the evils of femlines. So let's dissect this question a little bit. Is it okay to place a femline? And the answer to that really depends on the type of patient that we're talking about. So we'll talk about three different topics today. First, we'll talk about placing a femline in your stable or stable-ish patient where you have a few minutes to gown up, get sterile, and do it right. But is this an okay line to place? Isn't this, isn't this a dirty line? After that, we're going to talk about the infamous crash femline when you are in a code situation and someone inevitably yells for the central line kit and then just starts stabbing the groin. Do you need to do this? And then last, we're going to talk about a couple of tips if you do decide that a femline is the right line for your patient. So let's get started with the stable or the stable-ish patient. Now, maybe you've decided that a femline is preferred in your patient because their IJ looks terrible, or maybe because they have some gnarly excoriated skin from their tracheostomy, or maybe your patient is still pretty sick and in respiratory failure and they can't lay flat for an IJ or a subclavian. What you'll hear from a lot of docs is that they are concerned that the fem line is a dirty line, that it should really be avoided at all costs, because if you put one in, you increase the likelihood of a clabsy or a central line associated bloodstream infection. But is this true? There's a fair amount of literature on this, but most of it is not particularly good. And it turns out when asking if fem lines are dirtier than IJs, the answer is... Maybe not, actually. If you're deciding between doing an IJ and a FEM, and an IJ is probably our most common line in the ED, it turns out that your infection rates in the newer studies are actually pretty similar to the infection rates for sterilely placed internal jugular central venous catheter. So if you're interested in diving into the rabbit hole of literature on this, feel free to just boop this QR code, and that's going to take you to a Google Doc with a bunch of studies that I looked at to try and answer this question. The other concern about femlines is that they may cause more DVTs, and this has even less data and crappier data, but again, some of the newer literature suggests that the rates of thrombosis are actually, again, similar to IJs. So here's the take-home. If you think your patient could benefit from a femline, don't feel like you've destined them to get a clabsy or you've destined them to get a DVT. Remember, every patient's different. So, you know, if the groin looks particularly unsanitary, just check yourself. But in general, it's probably an okay line to place. All right, so let's try and answer the question about the really sexy emergency medicine topic of the crash fem. It, I mean, it even sounds cool to say it's a crash fem. Uh, but if you're trying to put a crash femline into a patient... The first thing I want you to do is consider what you're trying to accomplish. Because if you just need vascular access because no one could get a peripheral IV, there's probably a much faster way, like getting an IO. And I'm willing to bet that a lot of you can probably put in an EJ or an easy IJ also much faster than you could put in a femoral central line. But let's say you don't want it just for vascular access. Let's say you want to dump a large amount of fluid into a patient, like the trauma patient who is exsanguinating in front of you. You want flow, right? First off, if you're putting in a triple lumen catheter into the groin during a crash situation, you're doing this all wrong. The flow rate in a triple lumen catheter absolutely sucks. Do not do this. If you want to put in a cordis, that may be more reasonable because the flow rates are much, much higher so long as you know that you may be able to get a regular peripheral IV into the patient with actually pretty comparable flow rate. So decide which is better in that scenario. You may be much faster going up to the neck, popping the ultrasound on, and just throwing in a 16 or even if you have it, a 14 into the IJ, and that may be enough for your resuscitation uh, and probably a lot faster. And of course, certainly if you need large volume resuscitation and you cannot get IV access, that is actually a totally reasonable route to go. So should you put in a crash femline and in the patient in cardiac arrest for any reason other than exsanguination? Probably not. It's probably easier to drill the patient's tibia or humerus or throw something into the neck. And even if you are trying to resuscitate someone with massive amounts of blood product, you may be better off 
throwing in a regular large bore IV into the patient. So let's finish up with some tips for if you do indeed decide to place a femline. Tip number one, if you have the ultrasound sitting next to you, just grab it. Even if you're in a code situation and you decided that you're putting in a quote unquote crash fem, if you have the probe nearby, just pop it on the patient and it can help guide you in the direction that you need to go to get access. Tip number two, if your patient is obese, position them in a way that you can get any extra tissue out of the way, like maybe putting them in Trendelenburg position if they can if they can take that, uh, or just taping tissue off to the side, and that's going to clear up your, your workspace. Tip number three, if you do decide to do this without an ultrasound, set yourself up for success. Externally rotate the patient's leg to expose the anatomy, and then go ahead and put your hand in the area with your middle finger on the ASIS and your thumb on the pubis. And as a rule of thumb, no pun intended, the vasculature should be running right in the web space between your thumb and your index finger. And remember that the vein is always medial. So use this crux in your hand to guide your needle insertion. So dive really deep with the syringe and then aspirate as you slowly pull out. Because sometimes when you insert the needle, you'll just collapse the vein. So you may be more likely to get flash as you're pulling the needle out and re-expanding the vein. And finally, tip number four, if you're in the area trying to get venous access and you hit the artery by accident, don't panic. This is actually a perfect opportunity to place an arterial line in your super sick patient. Leave the needle in, call for the art line kit, thread the wire in and go to town. All right, so let's just recap our take-home points about femlines. If you've got time to get sterile and insert a central line properly, just know that the infection rates and the thrombosis rates in femlines, they are not set in stone by any means, but for now, they look like they're actually similar to the rates found in internal jugular venous catheterization. For crash lines, remember, ask yourself, why are you doing it? You're probably better off establishing vascular access with an IO, and if you need large volume, it may be quicker and just as effective if you put a big IV somewhere else in the patient, in the neck or peripherally. And last, remember our four tips that we went over. If you've got the ultrasound nearby, just use it. Remember, it can be really tough to put these lines in obese patients, so position them well and use tape if you need. And then last, put your hand in that position we talked about to guide your needle insertion if you're not using ultrasound for some reason. Maybe someone else is using it during the resuscitation. And remember, if you hit artery, that's okay. Just throw in an A-line and then go back and cannulate the vein. Thank you guys so much for listening, and good luck on shift.